So how do these health maps actually work? Now I'll try and keep it as simple as possible. Essentially what we do is we uh, use two specific color bands. One is called red, which is very obvious and we can all see red. The other one is called near infrared, which we can't see with the naked eye. Um, and essentially what uh, we do with these health maps is we look at the chlorophyll activity of the plant. Now, um, in order for a plant to photosynthesize, it needs red light. So it absorbs the red light that's coming from the sun and it's reflecting near infrared light. And then once we have those two reflections, we can actually take the ratio between them and calculate whether this plant is healthy or whether it's not doing so well. So if we look at uh, this map here, let's um, use this example to the bottom, um, we'll see that there's a spot that's not doing so well. So essentially what this map is telling us is that the chlorophyll activity is lower than in this area, say, here. And uh, I don't know exactly what the reason for that is, but essentially this is what this map is telling us. Now, another way to explain it is maybe to look at uh, this image from Acrobotics. Um, so essentially we've got these different color bands. Um, so let's start with this one to the, to the right. So red light uh, is absorbed by the plant um, and a certain amount of, of that is reflected back to the sun um, or to the camera. Um, and then more uh, near infrared light is reflected and if we calculate the difference between these two we can actually see that this plant or this leaf is actually uh, doing quite well. If we look at the other side of the spectrum um, when a leaf is dead or is not doing that well it will reflect less near infrared which means that this ratio between these two different bands are different from these two bands. So if we go back um, to this layer this is essentially what's happening here. So the difference between the red band and the near infrared band is less in this area than say in this area and that's essentially how these health maps work it tells you just what the chlorophyll activity of the plants are now um, when when a plant is stressed um, it will affect the chlorophyll activity so in, in other words anything that affects the plant health uh, will also affect the chlorophyll activity or its ability to photosynthesize. And that's essentially um, how we can actually um, calculate these differences in these maps and why we see these variations. It's just purely because the chlorophyll activity in these plants um, uh, actually differs. Now, it's not only... Um, the health that shows these uh, variations. Sometimes it's also, well, in, in all cases, the size of the plant is also um, playing a big role. So the bigger the plant is, the more chlorophyll activity there is. And the smaller the plant is, the less chlorophyll activity is happening um, of uh, photosynthesis. And, uh, and that's why it's so important to always compare uh, apples with apples, if I can use that analogy. <laughs> um, always compare the same crop type, but always also compare the same size. So um, if you compare small millies or maize with big maize, you will have a difference. So let's imagine that this was planted um, earlier, uh, sorry, this was planted later uh, than, than this one. Um, then you would see this difference. Um, but even if this crop type was different from this crop type, it will also show this difference because different crops photosynthesize differently. Um, and that's essentially how the health maps actually work. Sorry about the tongue twister there. <laughs>